Amen. For several weeks, our journey has been to find out how we face all the days of our life. How are we going to deal with all the days of our life? You see, our days change every day. I, 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 things that happen in our life change every day. People say, well, I don't like change. Well, I, I thought about it this week. There are some things that are good in change. Most, a lot of people today don't have a regular phone in their house. They took those out. We have cell phones. I thought the other day, boy, how fun it would have been to date my wife with a cell phone and have unlimited calling. <laughs> but all those years when we were dating, when I was in one place and she was in another place, I'd call her once a week. And I couldn't talk no more than five minutes because Southern Bell was very expensive. And Rock, I'm very tight, so I, I couldn't talk no more than about five minutes. And so things have changed. I, I got to thinking, some of you, I don't remember, some of you remember the old outhouses. Boy, I mean, people get up in the middle of the night and have to go to the bathroom or have to go out to the outhouse. Thank God all my life I've had indoor plumbing. Amen. I can remember the time when we got the first TV, though. I can remember that. I can remember when we got the first color TV. Oh, and by the way, things have changed. Uh, years ago, people used Encyclopedia Britannica. And they would come through in the summer. These boys would come through and they want to sell you a, an encyclopedia, a set of encyclopedias. Now you don't need the encyclopedias. You got, uh, uh, you got internet access. So things have changed for us. And our life is changing. Every day things are changing. New inventions are happening. I can remember when they came out, most, most of them in the auditorium and most of them are out in the car. I can remember the old 8-track. When you had the old eight tracks, and boy, everybody thought you'd ride. And then you thought, how can you get that eight track in a car? And then they come out with the cassette. And now the cassette is a thing of the past. For most people, it's a, it's a CD. And my son doesn't even use the CD. He just puts his on a thumb drive and sticks it in there and plays everything off of a thumb drive. You see, our life is changing. And so really what Psalm 23 is about is how do we find the answer for all the days of our life as we're living in change? And as we come to the final words of the psalm, we end up where we started with. He starts with the Lord in verse number one, and he ends up with the Lord. From his opening words to his closing thought, David has shared the secret to facing all the days of our life, and it's found in the Lord. Aren't you glad in spite of all the changes, we have one thing that doesn't change. Things are changing. Our society is changing. Our nation is changing. And, and for most of us this morning, I don't know about y'all, I do not like change. Does anybody like change? I mean, I, I just do not like change. I mean, once I get my mind set, this is the way it's going to be, this is the way it's going to be. I do not like change. And I'm glad I have something, I have someone in the changing society who do, does not change, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ. How do, I, how do I navigate the society in which we're living today? How do I navigate the coronavirus? And who knows what's next down the line that one day is going to hit us? How do we navigate those things? We have to know the Lord, and it's found in being able to say in verse number one, the Lord is my shepherd. When we think about the days of our life and the many paths and the routes that life will take us, it makes me eternally grateful, Brother Ken, that I can say the Lord is my shepherd. I'm so thankful that I've not had to face life without the Lord. I'm so thankful that I've not had to face the coronavirus without the Lord. Aren't you glad you can say with the hymn writer, I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. Let's consider now tonight or this morning David's final words. And if anything... They ought to fill us with a greater affection and gratitude uh, that we can say the Lord is my shepherd. And I only tend to get to the first point, uh, Lord willing. I want you to look at, at the days behind us. David is kind of at the end of this psalm. 
He's looking, he's, he's looking behind him, he's looking before him, and he's looking beyond him. He looks back, he looks beside him, and he looks beyond what's ahead, and he says, I'm so glad the Lord is my shepherd. Now, as he looks at what's going behind him, it fills his heart with adoration. As David looks behind him, he sees that there's been a couple of very special companions that have been following him ever since the day he knew, became to know the shepherd. Throughout the psalm, he's portrayed, if you read this psalm and you'll think about it, throughout this psalm, this shepherd is portrayed as one who's going before me. We see one time when he says, thou art with me. But he's portrayed primarily as going before the sheep. He's leading them uh, beside uh, the still waters. He's making them to lie down. He's preparing a table before me. He's always been leading the sheep, never driving them, and always in front. But now, David's reflection makes him aware that goodness and mercy had been behind him all the days of his life. You say, what is goodness and mercy? They're his rear guard. They are his heavenly escorts. Goodness and mercy, one Bible scholar said this, they are the shepherd's sheepdogs. Now let that sink in. If I've got the Lord as my shepherd, he's going before me. He's preparing a way. Uh, he's there. He's out front. I can keep my eyes on him. And by the way, who should our eyes be on? It should be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. Does it not say, looking unto him, the author and the finisher of our faith, our focus ought to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I tell you, our preaching ought to be on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what, what we tell people ought to be about the Lord Jesus Christ. But listen, if our focus is on the Lord Jesus Christ, that means we ought not to be looking behind us. But you say, aren't you glad there's something that is behind us? What is it? It's the shepherd's sheep dogs. One is named goodness, and one is named mercy. Now, I want you to think with me, picture, if you can, in the car and those on the Facebook and those that are in the auditorium, picture, if you will, the shepherd out front of the sheep. He's leading them. He's calling them by name. Picture what's coming next. That's the sheep. But picture on the rear, there are two dogs. There are two of his sheep dogs, one named goodness and one named mercy. They've been following him all the days of his life. And as David now reflects at the end of his life, and he just glimpses, got glimp, he takes a glimpse of what's been happening behind him, he says, goodness and mercy have been following me all the days of my life. Now notice the first word there, surely. Surely means in verily, truly, certainly. This is a fact that's as indisputable as it is encouraging. Therefore, it, therefore, a heavenly verily or surely, it set its seal upon it. These two twin guardians, goodness and mercy, have been napping at our heels, and we're not going to travel unattended. We've got God's sheep dogs nipping at our heels following us. Surely, he says, without a doubt, it's an exclamation of confidence. Some synonyms mm -hmm. for the word surely are these. Assuredly, certainly, definitely, doubtless, inarguably, indisputably, undeniably, undoubtedly, unquestionably, unarguably, clearly, plainly, truly. Therefore, when the word says surely attached to a statement in God's word, you know what it says? You can take it to the bank. It's a done deal. And if you're saved, my friend, the day you got saved, God put goodness and mercy on your heel. Right. That's a blessing to me. Yeah. Have you ever stopped to consider, and I did this week, when princes go abroad, do they go unattended? They got somebody going with them. You let one of our Secretary of Defense 
or our attorney general travel, somebody is following. Somebody's going before him, and somebody's behind him. You see, if an ambassador goes overseas, he does not go unattended. He has somebody following him, somebody watching him. Aren't you glad, my friend, that the believer not only has the shepherd that goes on the front of us, he has the sheep following as your God's sheep, and he has goodness and mercy, his sheep dogs on our heels. And I tell you, it's a glorious confidence that David writes these words. The Lord surely, goodness and mercy, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He said, certainly, I know it for a fact. Goodness and mercy have been following me all the days of my life. Now, can I tell you, if you just take time to think about it, goodness and mercy have been following you if you're a child of God. And I'm going to be honest with you. If you've lived as long as, as some people I know and you're not saved, God's been good to you and God's been merciful to you to let you live as long as you did. Can I tell you, love him before you got saved? Goodness and mercy was following you. God was good to you. God was merciful to you. In a lot of ways. But let me tell you something. The day you got saved, God sent them two dogs on you and he said, don't you forsake uh, uh, Logan. I'll go before him. He'll follow me. But I want goodness and mercy on his heels all the days of his life. And I tell you, number one, I rejoice in the assured confidence of the sheep. They said, surely. Now, does you know what? The Bible talks about the riches of God's goodness. God's rich in goodness, according to Romans chapter 2, verse 4. And you say, one, one lady one time went out of church and the preacher was preaching on the goodness of God. And the, the, the woman that came out that morning, the elderly woman came out, preacher shook her hand, and he said, isn't God good? And she said, he can't help. That's just the way he is. Aren't you glad God's good? Yes. And he's rich in goodness. But I find also in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, he's rich in mercy. God's riches would have to fail. If we didn't have goodness and mercy following us, but it's an utter impossibility. For goodness and mercy to give up their chase of us. Now, I, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. It says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow. But I just want to mention, because I don't know if I'll get there this morning or not, that word follow means to pursue. It carries the idea of hot pursuit. How many remember that old story, that old cartoon years ago about Dukes of Hazzard? And one of the boys say he's in hot pursuit. you got goodness and mercy following you. I rejoice in the assured confidence of the sheep. David said, sure. And then I rejoice in the attending companions of the sheep. I, I did this this week, and I, I'll be honest with you, if you get a hold of this this morning, it'll bless you. Is there a difference between goodness and mercy? There has to be. Or God would just said, goodness is following you. Or God would have just said, mercy is following you. But what's the difference between the goodness and the mercy of God? God said, David said, as I'm going through this life, I look back, and I look back with adoration, and he said, and I've got the assured confidence, surely I have two sheepdogs behind me that are on my heels. And he said, these two attending companions of the sheep are goodness and mercy. And I, I sat down in my office this week and I began to think, what's the difference in goodness and mercy as I trace through Scripture? Let me give you some of the differences. Goodness is needed for our infirmities. We're weak. We're frail, are we not? That does not mean that we're sinful, but goodness is needed for our infirmities. Mercy is needed for our iniquities. Oh, God's good to us in our infirmity. God's good to us in our old age. God's good to us. But God's also merciful when we see Him. Goodness cares for the temporal needs. 
God's good to give us the rain, is he not? God's good to give us a car. God's good to give us a give us hell. That's the goodness of God. So the goodness of God cares for the temporal, but mercy cares for the spiritual. Goodness, you might say, Brother Ken, is God's hand. Mercy, Brother Rock, is God's heart. Aren't you glad that God's good in his giving? Yes. And he's merciful in his heart? Goodness is God's giving what we don't deserve. We don't deserve heaven. Mercy is God withholding what we do deserve. We deserve hell. Goodness is God supplying our wants. I don't believe there's anybody that can't, that can't say they're a child of God that God has not supplied all your need in Christ Jesus. But goodness is God supplying our wants and our needs. Mercy is God forgiving our wrongs. Goodness takes care of my steps. And this is the one that really got me. Goodness takes care of my steps, my infirmities, Brother Ken, as I'm weak and frail. But mercy takes care of my stumbles and my iniquities. The goodness of God is for him to provide. The mercy of God is for him to pardon. Now, I'm sure that you as me wish we could undo a lot of things in our past. Especially our sins and failures. How I wish sometimes there was a time machine that would take me back in time in order to get a second chance to relive our days or a magical eraser that could remove those days from the calendar of our life. But the hands of the clock only move forward. The pages of the calendar only tore in one direction. Therefore, a deed that's done cannot be undone. A word that's spoken cannot be unsaid. An opportunity missed cannot be reclaimed. And as a result, all of us live with second regrets. And even though we may not get a chance to live, a second chance to live our lives, our God is not without goodness and mercy. When we look at the many times we sin and fail, yet realize that God still leads us, still cares for us, still protects us, still provides for us, still loves us. As much as any sheep in his flock will have to say, goodness and mercy has followed us all the days of our lives. In spite of our failures, God is not disowned us. He's not forsaken us. He's not abandoned us. He's not turned his back on us. Instead, he showed us goodness and mercy. And in his compassion and in his goodness and mercy, he's brought us back to where he could bless us and even use us again. Think with me. I, I begin to think this week. Uh, Brother Kraft, I, I begin to think, and you've got to understand, is not this David the psalmist that wrote this under inspiration of the Holy Spirit? And David said, when I look back at my life, surely, he said, certainly, I got an absolute confidence that goodness and mercy shall follow me. Now, I want to emphasize something. I may get ahead of myself. He's also talking about the future, too. He said, it's been following me, and it's what? Shall follow me. But I want you to think about what David saw when he looked back. Think of the bitter memory of committing adultery with Bathsheba and having her husband murdered. Any man with such a past, well, he'd be filled with fear, don't you reckon? What about your past? I sometimes shudder when I think of what I've done in the past. And yet when I turn and look at the past, between the past and the present stands goodness and mercy. 
You see, here's David's past over here. Here's the present. Between his past and the present is the two sheepdogs. Goodness and mercy. There's something that's interesting to me in this passage I never paid attention to until this week. And really, I thought I had the sermon prepared until yesterday, and I studied about four more hours and added about four more pages in my notes. There's something interesting. Think about Ephesians chapter 6, have the whole armor of God. Your feet shod, your head shod, breastplate, your thighs are shod. Woo! I saw something I preached wrong maybe all my life too. Your knees are not shod because you ought to be on what? Your knees, prayer. But I've heard people all the time saying, one part's not covered. That's your back. And I've heard them all the time use this, and I have too, brother Ken. You don't go and retreat. You go forward. I know that is true. But I like the way the Bible says why I ain't got to worry about my back. You say, why? Because goodness and mercy's got me. Hmm? I can't, hey, can I get an amen right there? I, I mean, you ain't got to worry. You got the whole armor of God. And God says, you've got your head covered. You, you've, got your, you've got your armor. You've got the breastplate. You've got your feet shot. You've got your thighs shot. And he says, nothing about the back. Why? I got a back guard back there watching my back. And by the way, church, who usually attacks you from the rear by bringing up your past. Anybody tell me? The devil. He'll bring up your past. He'll come to you and say, you ain't worth nothing. Remember what you were. Remember how you used to drink. Remember how you used to cuss. Remember how you used to do this. And you did that. Aren't you glad that God's got two sheep dogs behind you? Goodness and mercy right on your heels. There you rear guard. Dr. Harry A. Einstein tells the story of a dear lady who lived by herself. True story. She was possessed with fear. She was obsessed with it. She's paranoid with it. That two men were following her everywhere she went. She looked around everywhere she went. Grocery store. She just, she's paranoid with it. She came to see her pastor. He said, Pastor, I, I got a real serious problem. He said, what's that? She said, everywhere I go, two men are following me. When I go to the, get on the streetcar, they get on right behind me. She said, when I go home, they follow me to the house. Pastor looked at her and he said, Ma'am, have you ever reported it to the police? And she answered, Yes, sir. But they say they're not there. They watch me and they, they've not seen these two men following me. But she said, Preacher, they're always there. And I'm scared. The pastor thought a second. He said, ma'am, I just want to tell you, you're one of the most blessed individuals you ever know. She said, what do you mean? He said, you don't know who those two men are, do you? No, preacher, you know who they are. Please tell me. She said, they're David's friends. What? He then took Psalm 23. And he read it. Sure, the goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. He said, those two people that are following you are none other than goodness and mercy. God has sent goodness and mercy to follow you all the days of your life. And she said, Pastor, that's wonderful. And to think I've been afraid of them the whole time. From that time on, she'd get on the streetcar. And she'd pause, and she'd wait for goodness and mercy to get home. When she'd get home, she'd open the door for 
goodness and mercy to come into my house. Church, when you look behind you, you realize God has a rear guard behind you. He has goodness and mercy. And they've been there every day of your life. And they'll be there if you're a child of God every day the Lord allows you to live. Goodness and mercy are following you. Listen to that psalm again. David's coming to the verse 6. He's coming to the end of his life. He's coming to the end of the journey. And he says, sure. Certain. Without a doubt. Absolute confidence. Goodness, mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Now let me emphasize, he didn't say followed me. He says they shall follow me. What he's saying is they've been following me, they're going to continue to follow me all the days of my life. That ought to make a Baptist shout. To realize that on our heels, when we mess up, goodness and mercy is back at you. Let me ask you, have you ever messed up? Oh, preacher, I, today, since the day I got saved, I never messed up. No, you just did. You're a liar. We've all messed up. But aren't you glad goodness and mercy is nipping on our heels? Right there. And they're in hot pursuit. Now, how many of you ever looked up in the mirror saw a blue light. It probably wasn't goodness and mercy following you. They're probably going to give you a ticket. But listen, if you can look back in the journey of your life and realize that all the days of your life you're following the shepherd. You've messed up. You faltered. You failed. But behind you is goodness and mercy. What a testament. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Those that are listening by way of Facebook, later YouTube, maybe in the auditorium, maybe in your car. Have you ever been thankful that goodness and mercy followed you? And they've been following you. And they're going to continue to follow you. When was the last time you bowed your head and thanked God? his two sheepdogs. You know the shepherd, but his two sheepdogs are right on your heels, following you all the days of your life. David looks back over his life, the end of Psalm 23, over, over the day's journey as he's been following the shepherd. And he says, you know, sure, certain, absolutely, undeniable, Goodness and mercy have been following me all the days of my life. What a testimony. What a blessing. If you're listening and you're not saved, I'd ask you right now, would you, would you trust Christ right now? Would you trust the shepherd in these days that we're living? Trying days, difficult days. I can say, sure. The Lord is my shepherd. And I can say assured that goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. God's been good. If you allow me to use this, Lisa and I know it's not a good English. God's been gooder to me than I ever deserved. And his mercy has been followed. When I've sinned, there's mercy. In my infirmity, God's been good. What a Savior. What a shepherd. If you don't know him, trust him right now. Right where you're at, you can say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. Jesus Christ has paid the penalty for me. I want to trust what you did on the cross of Calvary. If you'll trust what he did in his finished work, you can have the Lord as your shepherd. Then, Goodness and mercy are going to be right on your trail. What a Savior.
you need me, call me at 706 318 6642. 706 678 1855. We'll finish this message tonight. I trust you'll join us tonight as we continue to talk about God's two sheep dogs. Follow us all the days of our life. And one day we'll end up in the house of the Lord forever. Father, take the truth of the Word of God, the infallible and errant Word. And Lord, I can honestly say as David, as I look back on my life, I'm so thankful for those two men, those two sheep dogs, those two rear guards. The devil has attacked me from the rear. He's tried to blindside me time and time again. And I'm glad I had two sheep guards behind me, guarding me, protecting me, watching my backside. Goodness. Mercy, follow me all the days of my life. We ask all these things now in the lovely name of Jesus. His name we pray. Amen.